But moving away from The Voice for a moment, Kelly J. Keane continued her women's rights tour in Canberra today, taking her fight to right for rights of women outside the parliament. Again, the rally was outnumbered by counter-protests and many of Keane's supporters and other women who wanted to speak up in support of women's rights did not turn up citing safety fears. But community support for the defence of women's rights is very strong. I wrote about this issue in The Australian today, for instance, hundreds and hundreds of comments in support. It's really touched a nerve. Never one to let the focus shy away from her. Victorian Senator Lydia Thorpe turned up as a protester at the rally, made sure it was all about her. And here she was uh, speaking to the media afterwards. Now I went to tell her that thing that they are not welcome here. And I got pulverised by the police by simply telling that person that they are not allowed to be here. They're not welcome on Aboriginal land, she said. Well, one politician who did turn up speaking at the rally and staying upright, One Nation leader, Pauline Hanson. Senator Hanson, thank you for your time. What did you make of the rally today, the Thorpe spectacle? We saw her try to do the same thing, make it all about herself at the Sydney uh, Mardi Gras last month, again today. How did the crowd react? Not very happy about it at all, um, uh, Peter. I was there standing right, well, you can see me in the footage anyway in the white dress, that was me. And I was disgusted with her actions of coming there to protest, carrying the Aboriginal flag, and I didn't know what she said there, only that the fact is that you're on Aboriginal land. It is pathetic from a senator and, um, you know, she... This is her actions all the time. She wants relevance all the time. She's trying to make a name for herself. You know, people came there today in conditions. It was raining. It was uh, miserable weather. But people wanted to hear what Kelly J had to say. And I went down because I support women's rights. I support women's rights mm. in many areas that, you know, transgender and other people don't have a right in women's sports, in women's areas, in women's toilets. And actually, they have to understand, if you want to do all this, go and get your own services, go and into your own, you know, area of uh, transgender sports. No problem. Do that. But don't try and take over and make out that you are women when you are not biologically born as women. Let's go to The Voice. Uh, Thorpe was out there making her voice known on that. Uh, Crimea River, she said in response to the PM's press conference. Uh, you, her, I were all in lockstep uh, uh, opposing The Voice in principle. But what did you make of the PM's announcement today? Look, the PM... Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't believe all this um, tear-jerking stuff. Sorry, Peter, I didn't. I think it was. I thought it was pathetic of a prime minister, and that's my first uh, impression of it. What they're trying to do is um, push something forward on emotion, and it's not about emotion. People have to understand the implications this will have on our country. I find it divisive. I find it misleading, mm. and I find they're not telling the people of Australia the full intentions, what will happen once they give it constitutional recognition. And Chris Merritt was mm -hmm. ex excellent in, his, in what he said about this, and I totally agree with what he said. I hope people really think beyond the fact of uh, being, oh, well, let, OK, they were the first peoples here. Let's give them the constitutional recognition. It will divide us as a nation, split us as a people, and you will find there are a lot of problems that will happen. And this is why they want to put it in the constitution. They can legislate it. But if it's put in the constitution, mm. it will never be removed. I want to pick up something you raised in an adjournment speech last night in the Senate. It relates to a letter you got from a concerned 
a member of the public. Now, people say, oh, gosh, you get letters all the time. How can you be sure? Uh, I have to say I would have my ears pricked when I was in restaurants around Canberra. I often found stuff left behind in restaurants or on photocopiers. I even found one day the Labor questions on the photocopier. What, what have you got and, and what does it say? Well, it was an anonymous letter that was sent to, to me, to my office, and just received it on Tuesday morning, actually. And the letter was basically, it disturbed me greatly. This couple were in a restaurant in Woden. They actually heard the people beside them talking. After they left, there was four pages that were left behind. They photographed the pages and they actually then handed the paper to the cafe. They sent... Um, he was very disturbed for what he heard. But some of the things that they actually said is that, um, you know, 10% of appointments to be First Nations people for judges, magistrates, CW, SES, ADF officers, AFP and state police forces, corrections departments, vice-chancellors and ambassadors. It's about no entry tests and no fees for First Nations people and reduce the age of eligibility for First Nations people because of that we die younger. It takes... It means, you know, close of beaches and national parks that they will actually pay a fee for it. It's control and ownership of, of the water. You'll pay compensation to them. It just goes on and on. There's 11 points... Um, to this, uh, uh, Peter, all liquor licences across Australia to be vetted by voice. So this is an organisation. Let's make it quite clear. It was NIAA, the National Indigenous Australians um, Association, which is funded under the Prime Minister mm -hmm. and Cabinet of four and a half billion dollars a year. They were the ones that left these papers behind. So I have grave concerns about this. This is what I'm saying, people. Understand, if you give the yes vote, this is what you could be opening yourself up to because once it's in the Constitution, as the, as the Prime Minister said mm -hmm. today, under Section 51, is it's making laws in the good governance of the country. You've given them permission to make these laws. They can bring in whatever they want to, if not now, any Absolutely. future governments.